is my better way to say it, my white family. Let's, uh, let's uh, get into this word, amen. I'm not going to be before you long at all, but I do have something from the Lord. Look at somebody and say, try, try. That, spirit. that spirit. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash try that spirit. You know, the internet is full. People look, I, I guess I'm just different, but I look at the internet totally different. And so... People look at it differently, but I, I, I look at it like the devil, try, the way the enemy sees it. The enemy sees it as an opportunity to find out about you. Amen. He uses it to find out about people. That's all AI is. AI is just the computer version or computerized generated version of you. Yeah. Yeah, and you're already a cyborg because all of your information is already digitized. So there's a digital image of you that the enemy can track you with. And so with that, there's a lot of spiritual warfare on social media. It's not as simple as you just flip, flipping through reels. Amen. So you just ain't flipping through TikTok videos. Amen. You, there is spiritual warfare going on that I know personally has killed some people. I know people that, you know, they just, they're being attacked emotionally and stuff by it. But the internet, you know, it has some good purposes, of course. You know, we use it. I use it. But then there are also some dangers to it that you got to be aware of. You got to try those spirits. Look at somebody say, try that spirit. You got to always try the spirit. When you see something that gets tantalizing and wets your palate and gets you all, you know, moved and spiritually, you know, raises your, uh, you better try that spirit. See where it is from. Amen. Amen. You know, that's the beauty, that's the beauty of, a, of a fellowship. And that's why I thank God, you know, when the Holy Spirit came, the first thing God did after the Holy Spirit fell was started the church. Why did he do that? So the gifts and everything could be properly administered and more importantly, governed. Amen. That's the purpose that a church serves. And that's the purpose of the pastor and the leader of a church. Amen. Because we all need some governing because sometimes our feelings and God sound the same. Let me go over here because I ain't no amens over there. So I'm going to walk over in the new space. But sometimes our feelings and God sound the same. Has that happened to anybody? Just depends on when it is. Especially when it's convenient to what you want to do. You can sound just like God. In your own mind. Amen. amen. All right. There's some good old amens over here. I need to stay. <laughs> stay over here. Okay. So look at somebody say, try that spirit. Amen. Our digital society is programming us to get answers and achieve things quick, fast, and in a hurry. We are moving as fast as technology will allow us to, which is not always a good thing. Amen. You know, they, they erased Tuesday and Wednesday. Those days don't exist anymore. You didn't know that? Because right after Monday, it's Thursday. <laughs> Time. The earth has changed its rotation. It's rotating slightly faster. I'm going to do a video on all this, but can't get into it. All of the science of it. It is rotating slightly faster. There is an extra second that is gone. Well, there's a second that is gone in our time. 
but you won't see it because of the way we measure linear time. That's a whole nother subject. But God said he would shorten the days or nobody would be saved. And that's just not talking about salvation. That's talking about we won't be able to survive under the conditions that they are corrupting the world with. Y'all still with me? Proverbs 19 and 2 says, desire without knowledge is what? Not good. So desire without knowledge is not good. So you can have a desire, but if you don't give time for knowledge, then it's not good. Just because you desire it, that doesn't make it good. You need knowledge, and knowledge takes time. That's why the second part of Proverbs 19 says, whoever makes haste with his feet, going to do what? You're going to end up missing your way because you're moving too fast. Look at somebody say, slow down. slow down. You know, slow down. God ain't moving fast. He's just not. The enemy is constantly creating ways to help us defy the way God moves in our realm. If the enemy can get people used to things being instantaneous and on demand, then they will lose their sense of patience toward God. Man, when they invented the microwave, they just messed up the Big Mama concept. Remember that Big Mama would wake up at three, start balling stuff. Balling stuff, chopping, that's just prep time. Then round six a.m., she start burning, cooking stuff. Man, they came up with that microwave, boy. You put it in there, and it's just done. Ding! Full of carcinogens and, you know, whatever is, whatever is on, it's cooking that too. <laughs> that's, see, that's what, now if you could just set the, the food in there and warm it up, it might be better. But whatever you got the food on is infused in the food now. I know I just preached. Some folk don't want to hear this. Oh, pastor, now, wait a minute. Some of us don't have time. Well, that's what I'm preaching about. Where did the time go? We used to have time. If the enemy can get people used to things being instantaneous and on demand, then they will lose their sense of patience toward God. So if you use the stuff happening quick, then you're going to lose patience for God because God is not going to move quick. Yeah. Then you're going to outmove him. Yeah. You're going to leave God behind. Amen. But we got to make sure we follow God. So that means we have to slow down. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord. Look at somebody and say, wait shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary walk and what but in order to run and not be weary and walk and not faint you have to wait the only way you're going to have the strength to run and not be weary is to have your strength renewed by waiting It's plain. It's here. It's written. So you got to wait. I know we're in a hurry, man. Look at all these millennials in here. Got a church full of millennials. Millennials like to move fast. They like to just go in it. But you got to wait. Amen. Check it out. Run it by your parents sometimes. Amen. You don't know more than folks older than you. Hey, I know you think you have access to all information. AI, all you got to do. I was showing my wife, I was tripping her out. You know, I got the new iOS update where I can t talk in my phone and it'll talk back in my voice. 
and I was doing it in the car. You know, I'm fascinated by it until I really start thinking about it. You know, you'd be like, oh, man, this is... This. No, no about this. <clears throat> and why won't it let me send it to somebody? They won't let you send it because it's not really you. <sighs> you know, I like technology, but they be crossing the line sometimes. But I know y'all got all the AI and Google and you can ask Google anything. But you better take advantage of folks with wisdom. <clears throat> that have spent time before the Lord and actually been through something. Won many battles. I'm talking to folks that's been in many battles. Yeah. Rank higher than you spiritually. You know, you know there's ranks. Uh, you, you can act like they're not. Just wait till you face a devil. That's, that's when you learn that this is a strategically ranked army. Can I keep preaching in here? All right. So they will want these millennials will want God to do things quicker and on their time rather than waiting on his timing. This, look, if you don't wait on God's timing, listen to what happens. This strengthens their feelings and causes their emotions to speak in the form of a God. This causes people to create a voice of God that is not really his voice, but what is it? Then, I'm so loud. I'm just loud. But then when that false voice fails them, because it will, then they take it out on those that represents God's authorities in the earth, such as pastors, parents, and authorities. Folks are angry with their parents. They're angry with authorities. But you did what you wanted to do. Remember that song, Mama Told Me Not to Come. That ain't no way to have fun. Folk got shot up in there, but Mama told you not to come. You can't get mad at Mama. She always in my business. Her biz being in your business will save your life sometimes. Now, I'm not talking about after you get married. You're supposed to be listening to your husband then. Amen. Let me see, I got to put that in there because somebody, somebody, somebody has no balance. But if you in the house sucking up air condition, that's what that noise was. Eat. Where we go eat? Proverbs 19 and 3, the foolishness of man subverts his way. So what you want to do is going to ruin your affairs. And then after that, their heart is resentful and frets against the Lord. So you did what you wanted to do, but you're angry against the Lord. Can I keep preaching in here? First uh, John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but do what? Try the, Try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Amen. Now, a lot of folks get this confused, and they read, Try the spirit by the spirit, and they think that they can just try spirits by what they know or what they think. No, you have to try the spirit by what the word of God says. If many false prophets are gone out into the world, man, how do we know what's real? How do we know when it's God or when it's our feelings? Look at somebody say, the word. Angels, which... And uh, this passage, Galatians 1 and 8, represents entities, spiritual entities. 
can speak and even mimic the voice of God or else the scriptures would not have told us that we should not believe them if what they're saying contradicts the word. Every person I know, and I know a lot of preachers, a lot of folks, and everyone, when they come and tell me, man, an angel appeared to me. The little fuzz on my bald head stands up. Why did an angel need to tell you anything? This is not the Bible days. We have the Holy Ghost now. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, we got protecting angels and warring angels, and I believe all of that. But I don't believe you need to be having conversations and getting special numbers. And Y'all come on now. You know, some stuff is just not necessary. Why is it necessary for God to send an angel to talk to you? But they tell me, oh, God, an angel came and appeared unto me. <laughs> Why are you using Bible words to make it sound authentic? He appeared unto me. Unto you? Yes, he, he appeared unto me. <laughs> and he spoke and told me to launch this ministry and this and that. No, God don't call people like that, brother. See, you'll see, you'll see. And I sit back. And then we see. <laughs> and what gets me, Elder, is why did you come to me and tell me if you weren't going to respect what I tell you? you? You came and told me because you felt like I was an authority. But then when I tell you that you Looney Tunes, you get offended. But I know it's lunacy because I, let, okay, let's get the Bible and let's find out how God speaks. Amen. Then let's get the Bible and let's find out how God works through authorities and entities. And it's all in the Bible. We got to be careful. I'm telling you, every other page you, you flip through on your reels got somebody trying to give you a word. I don't know who I'm talking to. You sure don't because it's the World Wide Web. I don't know who this is for. Well, why don't you figure that part out? <laughs> Galatians 1 and 8 says, but though we, even if we do it, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be what? Man, curse that thing. I've been cursed for two weeks straight since I put up the color of Christianity. I have, I mean, they got video. Oh my goodness. They, yeah, man, they believe I'm a false prophet because I don't believe black people have superpowers. I don't believe in Negro land or Negro man. It's all false. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, they just, oh, brother, it's, there's a color to this thing. And, and you know, I'm preaching. I'm trying to get people into heaven. And you talking about skin color, man. You trying to make that foolishness right. Because of a job application that you didn't fill out properly. Boy. But I tell you, I don't listen to what they say. I don't read what they say. Some of them write pages and pages. Brother, this is for you. Please read. Delete. Me and Amy have so much. Ooh, is it fun? It's fun because you took two days to type all of that and it took me a second and a half to not read any of it. I mean, if it start out wrong, brother, I understand what you're saying, but delete. 
I don't even know what you said after that. I'm, I know I'm preaching what the Bible says. I have confidence in that. You're preaching something that the Bible tells me not to listen to. I can't receive you, brother, in the spirit that you're coming to me in. I can't receive that. I mean, I'm 30 years into this with extensive studies, man. So three years of YouTube is just not going to do it for me. I'm not listening to you. You don't qualify. Not three years of YouTube. If you didn't have a computer, you wouldn't even be black Hebrew Israelite. If you didn't have internet access, you wouldn't be wearing that felt. You wouldn't know what costume to wear. <sighs> People can prophesy, speak words of knowledge, or say, thus saith the Lord. And a lot of times, it could be the power of God speaking through them, but it's going to always testify. Yeah, it's going it's, it, to it's confirm something. Saw that preacher just speaking to this lady. She was doing something. And he's speaking to her own. And they be recording stuff. Some folks just need to turn the cameras off. And oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just want to let you know. Girl, get out in the aisle and start dancing because your husband. God said your husband is coming. She said, I know he's coming. He's on his way because we've been married for 10 years. He's on his way to the church. He's coming. Yeah, that's what I meant. Your husband is on his way up here. That ain't what you meant. Hey man, and then you know the Bible says it, it, there would be silly women laden with sins, you know, ever learning and what? Because they're allowing people to manipulate them emotionally. Amen. I told the single ladies over here, single town, I'm praying that they all get married. Amen. But I'm not gonna go to them and tell them, I see you with a dude and he this and that. I'm not gonna do that. To get their money. Right. Let me get this wicked picture off of this screen. But, <laughs> but they could be lying. So they could have a word of knowledge and all that, but they could be lying. Many today are so self-absorbed and full of their own will that they speak lies to gain popularity and money. Second Peter describes it like this. And through covetousness, they uh, shall they with feigned words make what? merchandise of you they're making merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not meaning God is going to get them but they're making merchandise of you they're using you for your money so that they can live a certain lifestyle and look a certain way your own this is the big one Woo! Your own deficits, I've been on these deficits and trauma and pain for weeks now, haven't I? Because this is what the devil uses. The devil uses what happened to you and how you are feeling. Your own deficits, trauma, pain, and circumstances can speak and sound like God. I'm going to read that again. Your own deficits, trauma... You know, these folks that started false religions, it was because of trauma and deficits. And an angel appeared to them. Your own deficits, trauma, pain, and circumstances can speak and sound like God when you feel lonely or when you have no authority over you. Let me tell you something special about, you know, we, we got Father's Day coming and all this, and I saw the little commercial about the king is it the king of the castle king of the castle that's a real thing 
I don't care if your house don't look like a castle. You are the king. Amen. And, and, there are certain spirits that can't get past you. Your authority shuts them down at the door. How can you spoil a man's goods unless you first bind the strong man? You have power over it. Some things you don't even have to wear. Man, please, my kids will never, that, that'll never bother my children. Because that has to get past me. You see what I'm saying? So, there's an authority. But when that's not there, certain things can get in there. And they can sound just like God. Especially if you get to feeling lonely and abandoned, neglected. Or like I talked about a few weeks ago, rejected. Just because you needed that word doesn't mean what you heard was from God. Amen. You, you know, you can go to conferences where... <laughs> They specialize in giving folks words without really having one. They have lines. I've even heard them say, you know, line up, line up, come on, line up, and I'm going to speak a word to you, but put a piece of money in your hand. You got to come. When you want a word, you got to have some money in your hand. And then they whisper it so nobody else will hear it. This is for you, you know, because you giving. <laughs> oh, you don't get out of my ear. Give me my money back. Give me my money back. Amen. But they do that. <laughs> huh. Yeah. And they charge you for it. To get in line and hear a word because they're taking advantage of your neediness. They know you feel you need a word because you are lonely. I know I'm preaching. Somebody don't like this kind of message. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So if your heart is condemning you, uh, if you got a heart problem, if something in your heart, if you're disappointed in somebody, something can get in your heart, an offense. In order to make sure that what you are hearing is from God, you must do what the Bible says to do. Amen? You must make sure that what you are hearing is tried or tested by what? Not your system of checks and balances. Oh, if my big toe flare up, then I know the weather is going to be unsavory. We don't need your... We don't need your system, your test. No. God speaks to me through no. We're going with the word on this. All right? Let's use the word. Let's the word, let the, let the Bible, let's do what the Bible says. You must make sure that what you're hearing is tried and tested by God's system of checks and balances. Y'all believe God has a system of checks and balances? Amen. The Holy Ghost moved. The power of God moved. Moved like, I mean, nobody had ever seen anything like it when the, when the Holy Ghost fell. Nobody had ever seen anything. Nobody will ever see that again. That was the entrance of the Holy Ghost. He came in a powerful way. We will not be sitting in here with cloven tons of fire on our heads. That's not happening. It don't have to happen. It, it happened. That was the boom. You know, God loves fanfare. Pow! Holy Ghost was here. Yeah. But then God saw the power of it and that power has to be supervised. So he created the church so that people could, you know, there could be governing bodies and authorities and different ones could teach and show, hey, okay, this is this, this is it, you know, by using the word. Y'all understand that? So there's a, that's the administration part of the gifts and different things, right? Well, we use the Bible for that. That's why we have a church. If everybody jumped up now and started speaking in tongues and interpreting it, we wouldn't get anywhere. That's what Paul was saying. He was like, hey, man, you know, I, I can speak in tongues better than any of y'all. Right now is not the time to do it. We don't need to just be jumping up doing that. Y'all, I need to teach y'all something. 
Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, when you're in your home, do what you, know, do what you want to do in your home. But there is an administration of the gifts. And you don't have to be in the audience waiting for us to find you, to use you, to do something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about order. And God honors order. Because he honors his order. And he honors home order. He honors the man being the head. He honors the children honoring the parents. He believes order, system. Okay. So we got to make sure we test these things by God's system of checks and balances. First thing you got to do, first thing, first part of the system, give it time. Thank you. Thank you. God is not in our digital realm. So we must know how to slow down and wait on his confirmation to come. This confirmation can come in many different ways, but we must wait until we know for sure that God said it. It may require time to, uh, time to pray and seek God. It may require fasting and time away from entertainment or distractions. Amen. You could have just fell asleep watching the Avengers. And now you the black widow. You, I mean, you, you, you got to watch the entertainment. Take time away from it. Most of the time when it's a word that is life altering, it will require a process to receive it. Anybody have to go through a process? Yeah, yeah. You get before God. God, I just, oh, Lord, I really need your direction. I really need to know what to do with my life. God does this. But, Lord, I really need. What is he doing? He's not backing away from you. He's pulling you forward away from what you're in. <laughs> Keep following Keep coming. Because over there, it's not going to work. James 1 and 4 says, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be what? Wanting. Nothing. Most of the things you want, by the time you get up there, you ain't want them anymore. That was what you wanted back there. That's why he made you come up here. He said, delight yourself in him and he'll give you the desires. He'll give your heart what to desire. He'll change your desires. Amen. Lined up. Make sure, oh, that it is lined up with scripture. If it's God, then it's not new. And if it's new, then it's not God. Oh, this is going to break somebody's heart. God is not doing a new thing through you. You see, that's going to mess somebody up. No, God spoke something to me that he had never told nobody. <laughs> if it's new, then it's not God. He's not doing a new thing through you. He only does a new thing in us when he makes us new creations. But anything God speaks can be affirmed by scripture. Everything God says to us has been confirmed by his word. He will never contradict his word. Look at somebody and say he will never contradict his word. That's our absolute authority. Without that, we have no absolution. That's our foundation, the word. So you can't come to me with something that's contradicting what he said. Matthew 24 and 35 says that heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word will never pass away. It's never going to change because he is his word. In the beginning was the word and the word was what? And the word what? Was. was God. If he's his word, then him and his word are going to say the same thing. So don't tell me what God said if it's different from what he said. Finally, 
It's got to be lined up with leadership. And oh, you know, I, uh, we're a church. If you decide to come to church, then you're in the church. If you decide to be here, then you under the leadership of the church. So when we select pastors, which are shepherds, we place them over us spiritually. Anybody got a problem with that? That's what you did. If you have a problem with it, undo it. Snatch yourself out. <laughs> because you decided to place yourself. You did it. So we place ourselves under shepherds spiritually. And shepherds, they watch for our souls and protect us from voices and things that are not God. Wolves. Mr. Pastors. By me preaching, you know some stuff is not God. By the structure here, you know when something is not God. By the way the leadership and authority is set up, you know when something is not God. It's all working to protect you from wolves. This is God's purpose for the church and church leaders. Sure, some leaders have gone astray, but even the ones that went astray, if you place yourself under them, you got to honor and respect them. See, somebody got a problem with that. Now, wait a minute. Now, I need to know, no, no. Remember, David was under the worst leader ever. Saul might have been the worst leader ever. Something was wrong with him. Somebody trying to kill you and you still honoring and obeying them. He said, if God picked him and he's still in position over me, then I got to do what he said. David had a chance to kill him. He said, no, it's not for me to judge this situation. That's what it was. It wasn't for David to judge the situation. God had to judge the situation, and he did. Everybody, all of them died. Saul, all his kids. So the situation got handled, but it wasn't for David to handle it. Amen. Now, Samuel wasn't under, uh, under Saul. So Samuel can go and check Saul. Is that a gnat? What? <laughs> yeah, and it's keep following me. It likes my cologne. And if that's the devil, he's going to be easy to get rid of. It's a gnat. <laughs> Let me go get my tennis racket. <laughs> Yeah, so you remove yourself from situations like that, but if you're in those situations, then you can't cause a mutiny. Amen. 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 That's not your place. I know I'm not going to get a lot of hand claps because everybody's a visual anti now. Amen. I've been under people. I've been in situations where I had to put it before God. Do I stay under this guy? Do I keep? Do, do I do? And while I'm under him, I got to respect him. I got to honor him. I got to stay right there until I remove myself. Because I'm not going to start a mutiny and get folks with me. And then we going to make a grand. Ooh, I, it's not how God operates. God operates through order. Amen. Hey Amen. You don't have to agree with this, but that's the way, this is, what, this is what the Bible tells me when I read it. So some leaders have gone astray, but whomever you place in that position, you must honor and respect. If you do not want to follow their leadership, then you must do what? Remove yourself, Remove yourself from under. And I would take time praying and, you know, making sure, but just remove yourself. Yes, Amen. God respects his order and he will not allow you to defy your leadership. Amen. We don't agree with everything our parents say, but it's a certain way we have to address our parents. Can't go get nobody to beat your mama up because you mad at her. You know, that's that deep hood. But God respects his order. Hebrews 13 and 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they must give an account. 
that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Because if they do it with grief, it is unprofitable for you. Do we understand that? So these are the three ways you test the spirit, man. Make sure that it's, you give it time. Make sure that it lines up with scripture. And make sure it lines up with leadership. That you, that you put yourself. Summary. You know, you got to preach these messages as the church grows because we want everybody on the same page and understanding how things, how things work in a church. Our generation is in trouble. So many are raised without proper guidance, so they don't know how to be guided. They are addicted to the instant gratification of social media, so they don't know how to wait. They are traumatized by their past, so they don't know how to trust leaders and authorities, or they do not trust leaders and authorities. They are rated by likes and views, so their esteem is linked to the approval of people instead of the approval of God. This causes them to seek out voices and inclinations instead of truly seeking the will of God. It's this generation, man, it's rough. Remember, God's word is always first. And what you feel you heard from him must line up with what his word says. Amen. 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 We must follow God's orders regarding those that we have entrusted with watching for our souls and we must trust them to guide us and help us. Finally, we must be healed of our past trauma. This is the big one. Man, I must have said trauma every week for the last month. But you got it. Man, that trauma is going to take you down if you don't do something about it. The way you feel about yourself, your opinion of yourself, the agony of your past, that trauma. We must be healed of our past trauma and issues and never allow them to linger on uninhibited. Because they will begin to guide our lives and our decisions, creating voices that speak to us in place of what God truly wants us to do. The people that are dogging me out in the black Hebrew Israelite world, man, I teach a word and a doctrine that could really, really help them. But they take the out. You're a false prophet because of the skin thing. And they're missing out on healing for what is really ailing them. God got a surgical knife and you got a wooden spoon. God is ready to cut deep and get in there and fix it. But you want to be known for how you look because that's all you have. We must be patient and allow God to work on us so that through our healing and deliverance, he can train us to truly hear what he is speaking. You know, when you really get trained, in knowing God, his word will say enough. <laughs> I can't get no. You don't have to hear what, Lord, huh? Who? He'll speak up the Bible and it'll speak. It'll speak. Yeah. We must be patient and allow God to work on us so that through our healing and deliverance, he can train us to truly hear what he's speaking. When we learn to wait on the Lord, we will learn how he speaks to us. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 30 and 1 says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. So you're listening to something you're not listening to me and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit this is the part that they may add you're only making it worse you're making it worse 
You're making you, the healing you could have had. You're making it all worse by adding sin to sin. Everyone, stand to your feet. You know, when I was young, man, people, I would hear people give these testimonies of how God audibly said something to them and they was driving and God yelled through the radio. Uh, you know, they had, I've, I've heard it all, man. They, I mean, I heard God say this and God said that and y'all know I always say it. Showed me and told me and told me and showed me and, you know, so when God called me to ministry, I was over in Meadowbrook, I'll never forget, in this house, and I was in the bed, and he took me out of my bed and showed, took me all over the world, showed me a message that he had put in my mouth, and all of this stuff, it was like a out-of-body, total out-of-body experience. And then he brought me back and put me in my body, and I got on my knees, and I repented and prayed. And it was a, an amazing experience because I literally went to all the places that I ended up going to during the Truth on Hip Hop. And this was 10, 15 years before that ever happened, or 10 years. And so I knew I had gotten called and all of that, whatever, whatever. But then after that, I started hearing other stuff and other voices. And people, you know, people in the holiness church got to always try to one up you. So I would tell my testimony. I'm like little, uh, what's the name? Who was that? Uh, Joseph. So I tell my story. Yeah, God did this. And this. Well, God, God, oh, I'm gone now. I'm saying, hey, hey, come back, man. This is what, my story. And folks start trying. <laughs> folks got to doubt, do you, and all of this. And so that made me start questioning, okay, was that really God? And I had a preacher tell me, he said, man, the only way you're going to really know if it's God is to know God. <laughs> I said, well, I'm, I'm not sure. He said, man, when you're not sure, you don't know him good enough. So I took some time to wake up every morning five o'clock I think th no three o'clock seek God no questions I'm not asking him to say nothing to me I just want to know who you are opened up the Bible read about him let him speak read speak read did that for three years straight just read read after that that's when he gave me the vision of the truth on hip-hop and the vision of EX ministries actually but I had to get closer he backed up he's like man it's a lot of noise over there where you are so, ain't no telling what you're hearing. Come this way. Come closer. Come closer. That's trying the spirit. That's how you try the spirit. In order to know what God is saying, you got to know God. Amen? Amen. I want to pray for you. If you want to know God even more, to be sure of what he's speaking to you, just come on up. We're going to... Just ask God to grace us with his, his power and his plan here. Man, when a word like this comes, it's for somebody. Big decisions you got to make. Man, I ain't marrying nobody if I don't know God said it. You don't be dating nobody if you don't know if God said it. Amen. I ain't launching no online ministry if I know God, if God said it. Because my feelings can say one thing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm not coming out with that album. I'm not releasing that project unless God said it. Just because you can make some music don't mean God told you to record an album. <laughs> and the thing that gets me are you really ready for the warfare that's coming? When you launch into the deep, 
Are you prepared for that? You're like, well, with me, you just go, you just speak. Well, you don't know the work that God makes you put in to prepare to do his work. You don't just decide that. That's not up to any of us. We got to be built for it. Got to be made for it. And you don't know your future. It could be a distraction to keep you from getting married. Man, I'm preaching in this place. It could be a distraction from your marriage. You better know. In order to know, you got to know him. You got to know he said it. You got to know. Amen. And when you're not sure, back up with him. Come out of the noise. Get away from the distraction. And most importantly, get out of your feelings. <laughs> get out of your feelings. Your feelings going to almost always say yes. Everyone bow your heads. Man, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls, for making us whole. Thank you, Lord, for snatching us out of the fire and protecting our very lives. Thank you, Lord, for always being consistent, being constant. Thank you, Lord, for being real. We thank you, oh God great God of heaven, great God of everything. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this word and thank you, God, for your methods to keep us from falling. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory. God, your spirit, your Holy Ghost, can keep us from falling, keep us from pain, keep us from fracture, keep us from error if we follow you. So right now, God, we all come, all of us in here, we come before you. Father God, surrendering our will, surrendering our plans, surrendering what we thought was right, surrendering what we thought was you, whether it is or not, we surrender it because if it's you, you'll give it back. But we want to let you know we're willing to give it all up for you. Whatever it is, we want to do what you want us to do. Father God, we want to be obedient. We want to walk in obedience. We want to be pleasing to you. And God, we don't want to be led astray by the wrong spirit. Check our spirits, God, that we are operating in the right spirit. Check our hearts, Father God, that we're not operating out of trauma and error. Help us, Father God. Check us. Fix us. Make it right, God. We surrender it to you right now in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word that comes to test, to try anything that contradicts it will deny it in the name of Jesus and Father God lastly give us patience patience to wait on what we're waiting on give us patience it will happen in due time if it's you just give us patience help us to not put our hands in there and mess it up release it before it's time Hinder it. Help us to wait. And we will wait on you. In the name that is above every name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hug somebody and say, I'm going to wait on him. 
I'm going to wait on him. Some of y'all need to say, this time, I'm going to wait on him. This time. I didn't, I didn't wait on him the last time. This time. I'm going to wait on him. I'm going to give it time. I'm going to let the word confirm it. And I'm going to operate under the authority of the leadership I selected. That way I can rightly try the spirit. Amen. Amen. Bless y'all.